All right, so we're here today with Chef Junior Tucker. Hey, sir. How are you today? I'm pretty awesome, Chef. How are you uh, doing? I'm doing great. Junior, why don't you uh, start out by, uh, tell me where you're from. Uh, I'm from Jamaica. To be more specific, I'm from, uh, from St. Anne. Uh, that's on the northern side of Jamaica. Yeah, now, so. how did you uh, get interested in, in being in the culinary field? Uh, actually, from a tender age, really. Um, my mom's a chef at the start, you know, see the passion that she has for it, so, you know, it kind of follows through. You know, it's a learning, as I said, it's all a learning experience for me. I had a supervisor that, you know, I don't know, like, if he saw the potential or was trying to, you know, you know, made me look better what he started giving me soup and sauces to do. <laughs> it was also terrifying, but I learned from it. You know, the first time the sous chef tasted the sauce, he was like, ugh! <laughs> you know, yeah, so he tasted it and it was all um, horrible. Like, he, he was only tasting roux because I had too much roux in there. So it became thick, but flowery. What do you attribute? How do you keep your cool uh, during such busy times? Ah, as I said, like try finding the balance, man. Um, you know, you might a thousand covers might might seems a lot, but I mean, if you segment it in in in, uh, in portions that you can manage, that makes it easy, you know, or not necessarily easy, but manageable. My name is Winston Gray. I'm from Montego Bay, Jamaica. Winston, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit of how you got started in the business? Uh, I actually started as a dishwasher in a small restaurant in Montego Bay, washing dishes. And then the chef resigned, the chef resigned, and the lady said he wasn't going to get a chef right away, so I should start assisting her. And that's where I started cooking. I just move around, learn a little stuff from the, the lady. It was a little old lady, um, Miss Birdie, that's her name. Okay, and you, how long did you work there? Uh, about four years. Four years, yeah. so you came up from a dishwasher to uh, your first level cook experience yeah. there. and then from there I went to Wyndham, Montego Bay. Yeah, I applied, when I applied I didn't have any hotel experience because it was just a small restaurant. The chef said, I'm gonna give you a chance. Try not to let me down, and I said I won't let it down, Chef. I noticed that you're very methodical at what you do. You're very organized. Where do you get those organized qualities from? Yeah. I think from my mother. Yeah, she always keeps us organized. Keep it nice and clean. Keep it organized. Make it more easier for you. I also noticed that you are uh, very level-headed under stress, probably more than any other person in the kitchen. Uh, what what do you think brings that quality to your... Um, I think it's where I started, because I I used to work in um, a kitchen and a construction site. Yeah, they were building a, a new hotel, and there were like 3,000 Jamaican men. All of them get lunch between 12 and 1 o'clock, one hour served 3,000 men and there were like three of us in the kitchen. Wow. So if you weren't liberated, it's a big mess. So you have to concentrate, deal with one person at a time, one thing at a time, one other at a time. Don't matter the rush, don't matter how many people you see, one at a time. That's why I, I do things. That's incredible. Just stay focused, stay organized, and make sure you love cooking. If you don't love it, you won't stay because the kitchen is not an easy place. You work with a nice fire and stuff like that, so you have to be very, you, you have to want to do it.
I have a wife and three sons in Jamaica. Mm. My sons grow like this, <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, but I don't go anywhere without them. Night, day, once you see me, you see my three boys. So it's very hard, it was very hard for me coming here. But... Now, are you gonna teach them to be a chef one day? Yeah. As soon as they can reach the stove, I'm gonna start training them to cook. As soon as they can reach their eye enough to reach the stove, I'm gonna train them to cook. One is 10, I have a pair of twins at 8. Yeah, they're, they're very good, they love, they love soccer. I love to play soccer, we always play soccer together. Yeah, Mario Williams here with Chef A.A. Ron. <laughs> so Mario, uh, tell me where you're from. Well, I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, born and raised. Now you know Quarter Deck's getting ready to be a brand new restaurant next year, and I know you were uh, at the Quarter Deck most of your years here. All my years here. Are you excited to return to the Quarter Deck? Yes, I'm excited to return because um, on our busiest day there, we did what? I say about 900 covers all day for both lunch and dinner. But. I see every day as a learning curve, a learning process. You learn something new every day. But, and it's, that's, that's, that's what made working on the HD program interesting because when I just started here, you got persons from India, Russia, South Africa, Serbia, um, Macedonia. So it was, it, it, it's a multi-diverse. And with rumors going around that it's, be, it's gonna be a bigger restaurant, more seating capacity, I think I'm ready for a new challenge. I mean, I live for the challenge. If you're not cooking from your heart, then you're cooking from your pocket. If you cook from your pocket, this is not the field for you. One of the persons that really influenced me in my career is my one of my high school teachers, Miss Johnson. Yeah, she was my food teacher, and like she just she just brought out a lot in me. So you know, from that day, and then my art teacher, um, Mrs. Lindsay. I was a little bit nervous because you know that's me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was a little bit nervous, but. Um, I just have the confidence in myself, you know, so I just push myself and then I have supportive persons around me that help to push me also. And I see that you always are working in very detailed, very organized. Um, how did you learn that? Um, I guess it's just in me. Like my mom, she tried, like, she is the person that grew me to become the person I am today. Like, they got my mom. <laughs> so yeah, she is the one that like, you know, always try to teach me the best things and, you know, try to give us like, me and my sisters, like the, the best, um, I would say like, you know, be knowledgeable about things, help us to become the woman that we are today. I'm from Ocho Rio, Sentan, Jamaica, uh, and I'm a pastry cook slash chef. You're a pastry cook slash chef. Well, tell me first about your pastry experience. I've been doing pastries like from I'm 16, and as I just got out of high school, I get the opportunity to go somewhere and learn pastry while I get paid at it. So I jump for the opportunity.
Well, by like a couple of months, they give me cakes to start decorating and that's where I learn from and pick up for myself coming along the way. Well, the love is always there for the boat, but I think I love pastry more because like, my father is a chef and my grandma is a chef too. So that, that's the love of cooking and that's where the love came from, from those people, you know what I mean, to be a chef. What I'm doing right now is like mainly for my family. So I always try to go all out for my family, you know what I mean, to make them proud. first you gotta love what you do you know what I mean because being a chef is, is hard work it's a lot of long hours hard work because you got to be on point in everything you do you know what I mean for me personally I like I like to see the smile on everybody's face when I present them with a dish or a cake or something that warm my heart you know what I mean so I would like to say just work hard stay focused and don't give up on what you believe in Until when I get to Beach Club, I was like, wow, <laughs> this place is crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah, what we do here, we do maybe half of that at Fraser's. Mm. And I like the rush, I love the experience, so I got to give you. He took a chance with me, and I didn't let him down because I didn't have an experience in the hotel field or anything like that. He said, you got to take a chance with me. And I proved him. Yeah, I proved myself to him that I was a good worker. And from there, that's where it started. And over the years, it's, it's actually watching other chefs do it because like, over the years you've been working different stations. While you're working yours, you're actually paying attention to um, other, other, other stations as well. That, I guess that's where like, uh, the detail orientation came from, you know? So, that's for me. The sky's the limit, really. I mean, everyone wants to own their own uh, restaurant and stuff like that. That's a good goal to have, you know. But if you don't have the education to manage it well, then it goes wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, to fail. If it, nothing comes easy. I mean, it requires time, you know, be patient and uh, trust the process, you know? A lot of people don't trust the process and try to rush it and then get burnt out, you know? It takes, if it takes time, if it takes 20 minutes, you know? Allow the 20 minutes to run out, you know? The time that, that doesn't seem like you're wasting time, but uh, be focused with it. I'm from Manchego Bay, Jamaica, and uh, I started here in 2016. Uh, the experience has been pretty good so far. Uh, for the most part, I learn a lot and the stuff is quite I mean, amazing here. So that keeps me coming back from time to time. Uh, in Jamaica, I'm a chef of the Rio Palace. Okay? Yeah. How long have you been there? Uh, I've been here for about seven years. What are some of the uh, responsibilities you have there for uh, Rio? Most of all, I'm one of the junior sous chef there, so mostly like just manage and go around, you know. Now, what made you want to get into the culinary field? Uh, it's a passion from when I was a young age. I was inspired by a uh, I held on the lady, surprisingly, she's blind, so I had us to do everything, so I said, yeah. I, I think I can do this. Oh. oh wow, did you get cook for her at home, or? At home. Oh. Then I go to school, start cooking at school, at the canteen, and yeah. Meeting new people, learning new dishes, it's, it stands out most of all, so it's not like, you know, to pick out one.
I've had come on over the years working with so much different shirts and it's a whole lot of competition out there so you have to be in the game. What would you tell uh, any young up and coming chef out there? What kind of advice would you give them? Um, young and up coming, you got to be focused and willing to learn new and just go for it. Nice. Well, to be honest, my husband did, because he has been a chef here for about five years. This is my second year, so he's the one who introduced me to Steve Pines. How did you start cooking? Well, I wanted to be a nurse for some while, but that didn't work though, so I got a scholarship because I was a guidance teacher. I got a scholarship and I went to cooking school, that's Archer St. And then after that, I went on uh, work experience and I found it the love for it, the passion for it. This is my second year. This is your first year at uh, Beach Club? Yes, this is my first year at Beach Club. So what do you think about this summer? This was an unprecedented summer for the Beach Club because the quarter deck was closed. It was way busier than quarter deck. But I got a great experience. I would do it over and over again. What would you tell any young up and coming cooks or chefs out there that want to get into the business? I won't say it's easy, to be honest. It's challenging, but with hard work and determination, you can achieve anything you want to. Understand? There are going to be days when you feel like you can't, but if you have a passion and a love for cooking, you will push. Because honestly, when you're on the stove or you're making a salad, because I'm on the salad bar, sometimes I do fry station. When I'm on the salad, and I'm making a salad. I put all my love into that salad. What got you interested in being uh, a chef? What got me interested in being a chef? I really, really like like the kitchen. I like to, you know, produce good quality of work. Whether it be salad, whether it be like on the range, any type of food there to prepare, you know, I like the presentation of everything. My name is Dwayne Duncan, I'm from Ochoa, Jamaica, and I've been cooking for 22, 23 years. Is there a certain person or a certain experience that, that made you want to be in, in food? Not really. Um, when I was flipping burgers, um, there was an opening at a certain hotel and they told me about it and I went for an interview and I got you. I started out flipping burgers at a fast food restaurant. Then from there I went to culinary school. I gained the knowledge of being a cook, then gradually I upgrade myself to chef of party, and again, upgrade myself to sous chef. Um, I, I did different courses in the culinary field, like leadership management, you know, I've been through 
the whole process of food costing and purchasing, the whole works. Well, to be honest with you, my first mentor was my grandma, even though she died before I started cooking, trust me. Tell us about that. She was a lady who loves cooking. I mean, you know, in, in Jamaica, um, we love authentic food, you know? So she's always cooking. So, to be honest, I started from an early age of about 12. But I didn't like it, but I started at 12. Why didn't you like it? To me, it's nothing really, but I just ate the fuck off going in the kitchen and cooking for three or four persons. Compared to now, I'm cooking for thousands of people. When you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and it gets busy, you have to can look around and see that, guess what? I'm gonna move from zero to 10 to 20, which means I'm gonna step up my game. I mean, when it's slow, you know, you're gonna take it easy, you know, go through the motion, but when it gets busy, you have to put in 110%. Well, I like to see people grow. Meaning, it's a field that's wide, you never stop learning. I've been through a lot of young people. Quite a few are here right now. Quite a few are different places. The reason being, I'm a person who like to give back. When I give back, I don't expect anything. If you don't have a passion for it, don't do it. You've got to be passionate because it takes time, energy, and a lot of head peace. If you're only going to do it for the money, don't do it. Great words from a great chef. Just start. Well, you know, my first experience was me and my dad. I do a wedding back in Jamaica. So anyway, he was telling me about, like, he showed me to make that, uh, what do you call that, lobster base, and a little more of, like, how to boil a soup bone, how to make stock. Anyway, I get to like it because he's a chef. So anyway, I take it from there, and he let me go to Run Out Day Heart, where, I get you in a, one of the sandals trained hotel where I started my little training. Uh, I think it's couples. Anyway, I get my gig rare. I get a break to come overseas that what from 2007 where I started cooking and you know I get from there I keep elevating myself to other places I work on I work with this company Disney where I learn a lot of stuff too and then from there I just take it from there and just like this cooking and I said you know this is a good gig and then I'm a person like to eat so you know Now you as a chef, I noticed uh, that you like to have fun while you work. Yeah. How do you keep your your such a light and uh, fun personality? How do you do that? All right, for me, for me, you know, when you're happy, 
it's the best way of you know learning new things it's best of a way to elevate yourself you know what i'm saying to let like, people have an understanding what you're all about you know what i'm saying because you know when if you like an upset person and trying to cook i don't think you're going to try to learn anything you know what i'm saying and for me the more you relax and be happy is the more you can absorb you understand so you can take it from an higher eye so you know to let other people know that you know i want to be like that person i see he's cooking and you know i see the enjoying his cooking yeah i like you know i just like to be happy you know i don't try to be on the mad side of it. <laughs> that's great well my goal I'm a more entertainer guy, but I love my food, you know what I'm saying? My food and my entertainment, that's my thing. Is you come to my restaurant, you're gonna get all the entertainment while you're eating. You know what I'm saying? It's like a live movie. You, you come in, you know, like when you go to the theater and you see in the movie, for my, restaurant you're gonna have live bands live entertainment that's what i you know vision for myself yeah i work at quarterdeck harborside Links, Bakery, Fraser's, Beach Club, twice, Quarter Deck, twice. Ah, the biggest part is sacrifice. The family understand that um, when I came here, it's for better. So we made that sacrifice. Uh, try to be in touch as much with families. Most. Uh, I really like the Japanese that's with the live cooking and you, the, all the guests you um, sit around you watch. Oh, you work Tobachi? Abachi, yeah. Oh wow! So do you know how to flip the uh, spatulas all and all that stuff? All those things. What? Spatulas, knives, eggs, everything. I wish I would have known that earlier. We would have had to put you out and do a station. The, mo the fun part is to make the guests laugh. That's the best part. I actually did, um, I did some shows that make people laugh till they cry. I did and really feel love about that. Really go to the extreme on that, yeah. Start cooking, um, I would say 19. That's in Montego Bay. Yeah, I used to run a restaurant for my uncle at 19. So he said, um, run the business, pay yourself. But I was too young to know about how to pay yourself. So I guess I didn't make any profit to pay myself. So. I, I run away at least. <laughs> it was a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, the young chef um, try to learn everything, stay focused, uh, learn as much from your superior because everything will benefit you in the long run.